back at making videos <laughs> while driving in the car, but uh, there's a good reason for it. Uh, the club season, at least for the smaller nations like Austria or the Netherlands, uh, is upon us. And we have Champions League qualification, Europa League qualification. And to be honest, with the World Cup just one and a half weeks over, I'm not quite into it yet. And it helps that uh, first time since 19 years, my favorite team, my lo the local favorite team here, LASK, is playing in the Europa League. Uh, they play against L Lillestrøm tonight. Um, but it seems too soon, too quick. And you know, the World Cup was really exciting. It's this big event, and afterwards, you honestly need a break. I totally understand that this is not possible the way how bloated the European competitions got. And I mean, for many of the smaller nations, and yes, I chuckle a little bit when I said Netherlands, but it's really the case the Netherlands are on a club level a smaller nation. I mean Ajax was playing against Sturm Graz yesterday where they won to nothing. It just seems weird to me uh, to have them enter that early. But I digress. I, I was more talking about how I'm not quite yet into it because you need, a, at least I need a little bit of break. I mean I experienced the World Cup full on um, and yeah, you know, it, that's all those qualification games for smaller nations are played right during the holiday or vacation season is another thing that I just, I know it's out of necessity in a way, but it just doesn't feel quite right. Uh, this is a time I'm, uh, where you should be in preparation for the league. And uh, like tonight, uh, Lillestrøm, they are somewhat still in a championship uh, or league mode. They are because the Norwegian league is a year round league, whereas you know, we are playing our first competitive game. We, Lask, is playing its first competitive game tonight. So there seems to be a disadvantage uh, right there, and that's maybe a reason why I'm not that excited about it. Yes, it's great to have finally European play. But I also saw, I mean, uh, I know it's not of big interest <laughs> to most of my international listeners, but uh, Lask not only didn't play in European competition for uh, 19 years, and I was there in 1999 when they lost uh, to Stara Bucharest. Um, it's also that we just, although we are a club with a rich tradition in Austria, we had the first champion that was not from Vienna, um, we had pretty rough years since that last uh, European Cup appearance and yeah we just got promoted from the second division uh, a year ago and now we are already playing European competition and uh, it feels a little bit, at least to me, uh, I am very about this effect what they, 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 that it could have. On one side I'm very happy, on the other side I want them to really concentrate on the league. Yes, it got harder, the league was expanded now. Uh, I can talk a lot about uh, the ills of Austria soccer as well. Uh, but I'm always a little, a little bit afraid that just such a European campaign after such a big achievement of making it fourth place in the first year back always puts kind of a uh, damper or you know the second year is always the harder one and that's where I, my wariness about the whole Euro playing in Europe thing comes uh, and you have to start your preparation early so you're getting tired sooner mm -hmm. yeah it all doesn't feel quite 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 right to be honest and yeah I understand European competitions are bloated. I actually think we should go back to a system where we allow less clubs to be in Europe, but that's nev nev never going to happen because even the small clubs that now play, uh, they are very happy about the income that they're getting. But it also is another, um, there is another 
aspect to it that although I think that especially the Champions League at its highest level produces the best soccer worldwide I mean there's no doubt in my mind about that um, I enjoy international play more uh, that's another interesting uh, feature I really I mean many people say um, yeah nowadays there's an international break coming up and we don't have every day a game and uh, the league is interrupted and we have to we are we are afraid of our players I actually enjoy international play more than I enjoy uh, at sometimes league play or Champions League even uh, although the quality is not as high and uh, it got me thinking why might that actually be I mean the last time I've been people go crazy I think the last time I've been to a stadium was actually an Austria game and it is more like uh, yeah life situations that uh, prevent me at the moment from going to the stadium where, why I don't want to go to a stadium uh, at the moment but the last time I think was about Austria games so and that was a while I'm sure I will go to a stadium again I think my daughter even said she wants to go to a soccer game so I will take her but I yeah why do I enjoy international play more uh, I think first and foremost although it sounds ridiculous it's a little bit more of an even playing field I'm getting a little bit tired I mean now we have Real Madrid winning the Champions League three times in a row big achievement I get it but at the moment it's two out of three clubs meaning Bayern, Real Madrid and Barcelona two out of those three always make it to the semi-finals now Juventus is joining the mold and maybe Manchester City and Paris Saint-Germain are getting there but all those teams rather leave me cold I think the one that I have the most affinity to do is Barcelona which I always count among my top five clubs that I like so uh, but they have not been doing very well of late and they probably played the um, most exciting soccer last season and yeah had a bad night against Roma Roma I would put ahead of Barcelona in my personal ranking I, for some reason I really like Roma so there you go uh, it seems to me the variability in European competition is a little bit gone I think the Europa League is often more interesting although everyone knew last year it's gonna be Atletico Madrid uh, they were just ahead and shoulders above everyone but I think the Europa League is a little bit more interesting because uh, it reminds me more about how the Champions League or the European Cup was early on uh, or even the UEFA Cup I think uh, back in the 90s when I really was wa watching a lot uh, the Champions League that was the big competition that you got you had to win but the U UEFA Cup was a close second because you really had the best teams that were not the champion playing in the UEFA Cup I think uh, it was 96 when I heard for the first of the UEFA Cup it's only on the second prize because uh, Bayern Munich won it that year and they were saying that's the losers competition uh, it didn't feel at the time like that of course at that time then they introduced that non-champions can go in the Champions League and the whole uh, league became super bloated but that was a really exciting competition I have to say and you knew that it's not the f it's not the top one because there was the Champions League that's the one that you want to win now it's all Champions League and the Europa League is an also ran but I think the Europa League is at least that they're getting a few clips back from the Champions League gets actually quite some excitement and in many ways is more interesting although the, also their stru the structure of the Europa League is just a bloated bloated mess so there's one thing I think international football especially at the highest level is a lot more predictable also the leagues tell me a league that was uh, the Serie A seemed to be open 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 and then uh, three games yeah Juventus won tell me a league that is open these days that's also a big damper uh, the World Cup is at least designed that you don't know who's gonna win. I mean, everyone thought it's Brazil, no. So, just a more level playing field. And I'm actually, and I will make another video about it, I'm actually quite excited about the Nations League. I think it's an interesting and great concept. I hope it doesn't go the way of the Confederations Cup. 
I actually think this has the potential of going the way uh, the, of replacing the European Championship. If this is done well, I think this really can uh, be a great competition. And also the concept behind it is made in such a way that you don't, uh, you won't get an early winner. So I, I think I'm quite excited about that. Uh, what else am I excited about? As I said, more level playing fields. The other thing is, I honestly, as a shirt collector, I like the international jerseys a lot better. Why? Yes, there are some classic jerseys in uh, club competitions, but they're always with sponsors, sponsors, sponsors everywhere. Uh, you know how much I would love to get a new uh, jersey of my favorite team, Lusk. It's their own producing. They even have the old logo on there. There's so much to like, but then uh, sponsors, sponsors everywhere. You have, I mean, I'm somewhat okay with the one main sponsor on there, but then it's ridiculous. I probably got to put a picture here. Uh, their main jersey, we have black and white stripes, almost like Juventus. We just have a little bit more black. But then we have a yellow sleeves with the logo of a local bank on there. And I understand the bank is very important to have, but couldn't it be in black and white to just keep it the color scheme if you gotta have it? And I mean, uh, Austria is anyway a uh, haven for uh, billboard jerseys. Uh, I mean, we have teams that are from head to toe in just commercial, 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 commercial because the money is so little and the uh, companies don't want to give much. With international jersey, you don't have that. They are sponsorless. I actually like that a lot better. In addition, um, many of the shirts that I bought, the sponsor, that are a little bit older sponsors, already slowly coming off, which never looks good. I hate that. Uh, for that reason, I like international jerseys already better. The other thing is that we might have to look into that. But I always feel that the international jerseys are more colorful. And that's despite many teams having in club soccer having stripes, which is actually something I really, really like. The, I like striped jerseys. Um, but the dominance of red, black, white, and blue uh, is. Yeah, there's a dominance of red, 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 and white in international soccer too, but I always have the feeling, especially at the World Cup, you don't have as many. Just the feeling. But generally, I, as, as a collector and wearing shirts, I feel more comfortable wearing international team jerseys um, because they're sponsorless. As much as I like, my second favorite team after Lask is Milan, as much as I like uh, wearing my Milan jerseys, I don't like that they had a betting company uh, for a while. I don't like that they have Fly Emirates. I mean, okay, it's an airline, I'm, I'm all right with that, and it's probably better than uh, Qatar Airways, but you know, I liked it better when they had a sponsor that was um, more locally, honestly, so, yeah, I don't like sponsors, especially, of co especially if your, your favorite team has a sponsor from a country where you uh, we are not so sure whether everything's so nice with that. I mean, uh, nothing against the Arabia, really not, not nothing against the Arabia, but the one thing I have always that's especially uh, Qatar with their Sharia laws and what they're doing at, with the World Cup, the stories you hear, I just don't like it. Uh, I hear better things about the Emirates, so at least I'm happy that uh, Fly Emirates is on there. And I guess Milan has actually quite a big fan base there, so it's all right, I guess. But I still don't like wearing sponsor logos, especially all over. And I'd rather like to have local sponsors, but I know that they don't pull as big money as a big name sponsor out there. Uh, and I'm still not over the fact that a Barcelona gave in I think it's still Athletic Bilbao, the last one, the last one holding out and uh, leaving a lot of money on, on the table. Barcelona went for the money after, you know, the UNICEF thing was great. Uh, and at that point, I think everyone loved Barcelona, but as soon as they went with Qatar, our, our, our Qatar uh, Foundation, uh, 
That was the point where I really thought that now but the Barcelona that everyone loves is slowly gone. And I still like Barcelona, but yeah. I was so happy when two years ago I got the Barcelona jersey sponsorless. I'm so happy about that. Uh, because the, the airline deal was still uh, um, not quite sure and then it was Rakuten that uh, took, took over. And now they are, they are fighting, it's Qatar Airways or Aeroflot and I am thinking this is just so anti-Barcelona. Barcelona was the completely different. So yeah. We can talk about commercialization at the World Cup too, uh, where I don't like many of the sponsors there, and I don't like that how FIFA is branding everyone and dishing out fines because teams are using other companies. I think I, it borders the ridiculous. Uh, but yeah, that the jerseys being full with logos, uh, and I even don't like that there are so many logos now for, for the different competitions. Uh, gets a little bit cluttered, honestly. And the last thing, and that's for me the biggest, the World Cup is a nice event because if you, you can watch it a little bit more neutral. And what I mean by that is, you know, yesterday, I'm from Austria, yesterday Sturm Graz was playing Ajax Amsterdam. Uh, and Ajax is the, I mean, I usually like Dutch teams since I'm an Netherlands fan. But the one team that really resonates with me is Ajax for the simple reason that when I grew up, they were playing, when I really got into the whole soccer thing, Ajax was playing one of the most exciting soccer styles I've ever seen. And I was in the stadium when they won the Champions League in 95. Uh, that team was exciting to watch and it was probably the last time that a team from a not so potent country won the Champions League. That team fell apart. It was the Bosman was right right around the corner, which is so ironic uh, because Bosman is, I think he was Belgian, but you know, he's from that region. But that Ajax team was one hell of a team to watch, and it was all from their own youth academy to boot. So uh, it doesn't get better than that. But what I want to say in the league, I support Lask and no other team interests me. If you're a, say, Manchester United fan and one of all watching the Premier League, that's the team you like, the rest you don't. You may have some sympathies towards other teams that are maybe a little, a little bit lower, but once they play your team, you don't care about anything else. Yeah? Uh, pretty simple. Uh, now, in European comp com competition, it is actually advantageous for you to uh, root for teams that you usually root against. Like yesterday, uh, when Sturm Graz is playing Ajax, because of the Austrian uh, rating, you gotta root for Sturm Graz, and I honestly like Ajax more. So you're always in this little pickle, especially if you, you want your team to get into European competition, uh, and you wanna get more spots, you gotta support all the teams from your country. And yes, if they go far, you're a little bit for them. I mean, I had a big dilemma with Salzburg. I mean, a part of me uh, enjoys that Salzburg cannot make it to the Champions League. They have all the money in the world. They just cannot manage to get into the Champions League. Uh, and it takes some comical proportions. Uh, look at who they play. At the beginning, they played at least the big league teams. Now they are, they're getting ousted by no names, absolute no names and it's frustrating uh, on one side. On the other side, they usually they make a good run in the Euro Europa League, they made it to the semi-finals. And it's this, yeah, Red Bull Salzburg is kind of the poster child of over-commercialization in uh, club soccer. But uh, for me it comes much as I don't like that, I also understand uh, lately that they are, what the concept that they have is a good concept and there's this slight admiration for that too and when you know when they go far in Europe I am cheering for them I mean, and you know last year the opponents they were playing there was no team that I really liked uh, better. Uh, Lazio, I don't like Marseille where they were ousted. Uh, 
I'm a lot softer on Marseille, but when I grew up, Marseille beat my beloved Milan in uh, the Champions League final. I hated their guts. I really hated their guts. So I'm still a little bit... Uh, Marseille is not my favorite team, although I have to say they have nice jerseys. Um, yeah. So, of course, at this stage, I was uh, more rooting for Salzburg, but it just doesn't feel right, because next time around, you're totally against them uh, when you have to play them. So, this is the, the other thing that is kind of weird. Whereas international soccer, you know, uh, it is okay. You have your home country, but it's okay to like other countries. Uh, maybe you can get, get hung up on a player that you like or don't like, but yeah. To me, the better soccer is played on the club level. That's a no-brainer. And I will always watch the big games in the big leagues. Uh, it's just much... The level of play there and the rivalries, that's something to be enjoyed. Uh, and I totally do. However, um, I find myself enjoying international play, especially the World Cup, a lot more. Maybe there's because there's less at stake. I mean, maybe I don't want to get as riled up anymore uh, maybe it's me <laughs> who knows well I hope you enjoyed my thoughts hit like if you want to see more like that and I'll talk to you soon if you enjoyed this video please hit like and subscribe to my channel if you've already done so I would like to thank you for your support it is very much appreciated also check out the accompanying blog at the link provided in the description below and at the end of this video thank you for watching and until next time